Hello, we are the Omega Omega chapter of Phi Theta Kappa. I am Raymond Barron, Vice President of Communications, and I will present the Egyptian culture. Hi, I'm Cecilia Contreras, and I am the Vice President of Fellowship for Phi Theta Kappa, and I will be presenting the Native American dance. Hi, my name is Luis Diaz, and I am a regular active member, and I shall be presenting history and photographs. Okay, and our question is how are the arts used as a record of history and culture? We chose to tackle issue number eight. Egyptian culture. The history of Pharaonic Egypt spans nearly three millennia, starting around 3100 BC. The ancient Egyptian civilization changed dramatically over the years. The way these tombs were built and decorated reflects these changes within the Egyptian culture. Major accomplishments were achieved during the three periods. The Old, Middle, and New Kingdom, which lasted roughly 500 years, 200 years, and 500 years. These periods were interrupted by intermediate periods where loss of central authority or foreign invasion led to decline. The mastaba was the earliest tomb structure. Because each king was revered as God, his tomb was constructed to last forever, which is why they have lasted for thousands of years. The mastaba was also a simple structure. It consisted of a single elevated platform and was built of mud brick. These structures were not particularly elaborate and were not decorated. In the third dynasty, the Old Kingdom, Imhotep built a step pyramid for Zoser. This structure was the first all stone monument and was of course the inspiration for true pyramids that followed culminating into the pyramids of Giza. Each king had their own different style of tombs. These are the pyramids of Giza. Like, Earth, like the early Mastabas, the fourth dynasty pyramids had no decorations. The pyramids were major achievements of the fourth dynasty, approximately 2500 BC, and were built for Khufu, Khafer, and Minkar. These structures are truly awesome. They contain nearly over 2,300,000 stones, and is 481 feet tall. Hieroglyphs were the earliest form of Egyptian script and also the longest lived. It is the most familiar to the modern observer. The 5th dynasty Old Kingdom which saw the construction of the more modest pyramids contained the first decorations. These decorations took the form of hieroglyphic writings known as pyramid texts which provide guidelines and instructions on how to ensure a safe voyage through the netherworld and eternal life thereafter. Tombs were decorated with scenes of the journey that the king or queen would take as they moved from this life to the afterlife, showing the king in the presence of major deities and making offerings to them. The scenes were highly colored and drawn from vignettes from the Book of the Dead and related subjects. A very different approach was taken in the New Kingdom. Very elaborate, deep underground tombs were the norm. Interesting, interestingly, these were constructed in the area dominated by huge natural pyramids shape formation. Part of the reason for this change was to conceal the tombs from robbers. Each tomb, however, could look dramatically different as experimentation with different styles were undertaken. Noble men were buried in mastabas. These mastabas were decorated with non-religious scenes depicting the daily life of official duties of the noblemen. The noblemen and high priests had decidedly more modest tombs. In the Old Kingdom, while pyramids were being built for kings, the noblemen were buried in mastabas, like mentioned earlier. Because of their value, contribution to the royal families, and noble elite to tomb construction, workers were permitted to build their own house of eternity. A special type of tombs known from the New Kingdom are those of the workers who built the royal tombs in the Valley of the Kings. Although these people were of limited resources, they were well equipped, equipped and skilled in tomb building. The tombs of the workers were notably more modest than those of the kings or noblemen, typically one-fifth of the size of noblemen's tombs, which themselves were one-fifth of the size of the kings. These tombs, not constrained by long traditions, tend to be much more charming and show an incredible diversity in their decorations.
generations, the ingenious peoples of the Americans have used dance as a key to keeping their culture alive. Dances were used for many purposes, such as ceremonial storytelling and entertainment. In the recent years, Native American social dances have served as a vehicle to bring us into the next generation. Through these dances, the younger generation is able to keep a continual interest in their culture. The hoop dance is the most requested dance in the United States. The hoop symbolizes a sacred part of the Native American life. They represent the circle of life with no beginning and no ending. Each added hoop represents another thread in the web of life. The eagle dance is respected and honored by many of the nations indigenous to the United States. Many nations feel that the eagle delivers all of their prayers to the creator. During this dance, the dancer transforms into this majestic animal as the dance represents the flight of the eagle. The Northern Traditional Dance. This dance is said to be one of the oldest styles of dance to have originated from the Northern Plains. The dance was used after a battle or hunt to depict and share the experience of the day's events. Male traditional dancers wear outfits utilizing historical articles, older bed work, patterns, and natural colors. They usually wear a single large eagle feather bustle on their back, bone breastplates or full beaded vests, moped hide leggings, lots of buckskin fringe, and feathered or porcupine hair headdresses. The Grass Dance. The Grass Dance, otherwise known as the Grass Dance Society, are a group of men that search for the perfect area for the dance to occur. After finding the perfect area, they flatten down the grass, fill in the holes, and bless the arena. It is the people's belief that once the dances are complete, the grass rises up as if nothing had happened. Fancy Dance. Originally referred to as the Crazy Dance, the dance incorporates brighter outfits and faster movements. The Fancy Dance is a true statement of speed, endurance, and personal expression. Men wear hackle feather bustles on their backs, necks, and arms. They also wear harnesses, capes, aprons, large ankle furs, and bells on their knees. Women use embroidered shawls with beaded or sequins cape and leggings. The Southern Traditional Dance, known as the Gentleman's Dance, this dance tells a story about the trackers and point men of the tribes. When dancing, the dancer carries a point stick, which is used to draw a circle around the track. The Jingle Dress Dance, this dance was originally performed as a healing dance of the Ojibwe Nation it is performed in a non-ceremonial style and can be compared to the sounds of the rain. When performing the jingle dress dance, dancers use an up and down motion due to the tightness of the dresses. This in return creates a soothing rhythm. Dresses are typically made with bright satin cloth or velveteen and the dancers usually carry fans. This dance, the fancy shawl dance, also known as the butterfly dance, represents the beauty and grace of new life. Even though the dance is very upbeat, the dancers look as though they never touch the ground. History and Photographs War The American Civil War received extensive photographic coverage and unleashed a flood of innovations and presidents. Matthew Brady became the most famous Civil War photographer, but hundreds of others covered the battles, campgrounds, and devastated cities and the impact of the war. The Vietnam War also received extensive coverage. For the first time, uncensored images of brutality were, were brought into the American living room through the evening news. Americans tuned in every night to see what casualties would be appearing on the TV. These images of hopelessness and violence immediately soured the American attitudes about the Vietnam War and caused people to take a stand to bring soldiers back. World War II is a universally perceived as a just war to combat the militarism and fascism of the Axis powers, primarily Germany and Japan. The war also brought prosperity to a nation that has struggled for more than a decade with an economic depression that threw millions of Americans out of work and created a dangerous political climate that threatened the foundations of our own democracy. At the beginning of the war, America was quick to act on a neutral attitude. The Japanese bombardment of Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941 dramatically changed the attitudes of Americans. As smoke billowed over the once peaceful harbor, any illusions that the United States could remain isolated from the war quickly disappeared. The images of Pearl Harbor represented death. 
of the idea that the Americans' geographic location and democratic history would make the nation immune from outside attack. The face of depression. As era-defining photographs go, Migrant Mother pretty much takes the cake. For many, Florence Owens Thompson is the face of the, Ameri of the Great Depression, thanks to the legendary shutterbug Dorothy Lange. Lange captured the image while visiting a dusty California pre-pickers camp in February 1936, and in doing so, captured the resilience of a proud nation facing desperate times. Dorothy Lange was one of the New Deal photographers. These photographers took to the streets on behalf of the government to snap photos of the country's poor and suffering, to be used as records, and to give the nation a sense of unity. Change for the world. Many photographs have captured the struggles of humanity working towards a better world. Movements like the Civil Rights Movement and the Indian Independence Movement have been documented in thousands of newspapers. Images from Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech to Mahatma Gandhi at a spinning wheel continue to inspire young people every day to take a stand and fight for what's best. This is the end of our presentation. Um, I, I thank everyone for watching this presentation that we helped, that we created for you guys. I hope that many of your questions have been answered or, and that you learned something from this presentation. Thank you.